Hi, I'm Sonia Armstead, and welcome to the French Food Cultural Experience. Today, I've got a great class of Linden students who are going to widen their horizons, widen their taste buds, and give a different flavor of food a try, and see how we all are merged together culturally. Again, my name is Sonia Armstead, born and raised here in Linden, a graduate of Linden High School. And a little bit about my journey is I was very active in school, you know, always on the go in school. But I knew deep in my heart I wanted to go on television. And I own a television production company, and I went down the television production route. However, all through high school, I was in a program called Minorities in Engineering. And the whole purpose was to get women and minorities involved in the science field. And that was great. And we we're going to go to school for free, because how many, how, many, how many folks' parents would love for them to go to school free? Four years for free. I had to drop the bomb on my dad that mm, this is not what I'm going to do. I'm, I want to go into communications. And communications, it's a big umbrella as I've grown in the business. My big dream was to go get a journalism degree and work at this place called The Daily Journal. Now, you guys are too young to know about The Daily Journal, but it was the one paper that was in Linden. I was like, if I work at The Daily Journal, it's based in Elizabeth, and I'm just great. And it wasn't until I got to college that I realized this, under this umbrella of communications, is a broad, broad, broad field out there. There's public relations, there's advertising, there's marketing, there's journalism, there's television, there's radio, there's magazines, there's newspapers. And now, 30 some odd years later, there's the web that, they, they, there's broadcasting on the web now, there's YouTube channels. So that the, the, the field has grown tremendously. And it's something that I'm very passionate about. And I was just saying earlier, I feel guilty some days because I don't feel like I'm going to work. Because when you do what you love, and I love television, I love telling stories, and I think that is the key, no matter what it is. I mean, I've worked in a few arenas, and I'll tell you about those in a minute, but if you are good and passionate about what you do, you can work anywhere. You can work at the Food Network, you can work at Eyewitness News, you can work at, in any field. You can work for National Geographic Channel. And so, what I found is, there's a passion in television, there's a, and I still, and I have a kind of a passion for radio too, because I worked volunteer at a radio station. And, but you find what you love, and you don't get yourself caught up with, oh, I gotta make a lot of money, I gotta make a lot of money. The money comes. And I tell you, in any field that you decide to choose, you are not gonna get there, and they're not gonna say, hey, you kid, you got what it takes, I'm gonna pay you $100,000. It doesn't happen. You work your way. You, no job is too big, no job is too small. Even now, I have my own company, if there, and, and we do a lot of cooking shows. If there is food spilled on the floor, you better believe I'm grabbing a rag because I'm not waiting for an assistant to get it because time is money. And for us, we have to get the, we got to get things going so we can start taping. Everything works on a, a deadline and a timeline. And that works for me because I need to be on a deadline and timeline. I know my personality. If I have all the time in the world to do it, I'll wait to the last minute. So I like working uh, on a timeline. So a little bit about my background. I graduated Linden High School. I went to Fairleigh Dickinson University, and I studied communications in, under the umbrella of mass media. At Fairleigh Dickinson, they had a two-year program where you could leave with your associates. And at that time, too, I, at, at 17 or 18, I was like, I'm not sure if four years of school is going to be something that's going to work for me. So I got into their two-year program because I always wanted to make sure that if I decided that school wasn't for me, I was leaving with something. And if there's anything I can tell you, you have to have something in your back pocket. I don't care whether it's a, a, a degree, an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree, or if you want to go to beauty school. You go to beauty school, you aspire to be the best darn beautician, makeup artist, whatever it is, and then go take some business classes and start your own business. Because when you are your own boss, you determine your destiny. When you work for, and I'm not saying that you can't rise to the top at a corporation, but you can determine your destiny a little bit more than you can when you're working for someone. And I, and I say this because my most, one of the most uh, visual moments or uh, memorable moments in my life is working for news day in and day out. And I say news is like a hospital. They never close. So when people say, do we get holidays off? No. I was tipping out of my house on Christmas and New Year's and every place, not going to parties because I had to be up and at work at two, three in the morning. And when I, and, and I juggled, we played, let's make a deal with vacation days. Well, I got a kid, I wanna be home for Christmas. And when I started my own business, I thought to myself, wow, Memorial Day's coming and I don't have to play, let's make a deal with anybody. So you can control your life a little bit. It's a little bit harder because I don't go home and say, okay, well, I know I have this and this and this to do tomorrow. It's like, I need another client. We've gotta make sure 
we uh, have a meeting with person A, B, or C and make sure we sell ourselves and we sell our company and everything's got to be not just good, it's got to be extra good because we're not just uh, producing because someone likes our work. We're now competing against other companies that are going for the same projects that we're going for. And so I started at Linden High. I went to Fairleigh Dickinson University. While I was there, I worked for the TV station. I worked for the radio station. Um, in high school, I also worked for the, um, the, the, the school newspaper, which was, which was a lot of fun. It gives you a lot of experience, and um, it also kind of helped me figure out, is this what I really want to do? You know, um, I, had a, I had a college professor tell me, you're not going to make it. You're not a good writer. I said, well, tell me what I need to do to be a good writer. Well, I like writing this way, this way, this way. And that's what he, he liked, a certain style of writing. So I wanted to find out if I really wasn't a good writer or if it was just his, a quirky habit of it. And I took an article that someone else wrote that was published. And I said, take a look at this. And he looked at it. He goes, nah, that's not good. And I realized everyone has their own opinion. Everyone has their vision of what's good and what's not good. You have to know within yourself what's good. And you have to say to yourself every day, I am good. I gotta see, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna strive to do something better, but I am good. I want to be a doctor, I want to be a television producer, I want to be a nurse, I'm going to do it. I might have to take smaller steps, but I'm going to do it. You can ne never let anyone crush your dream. And so for me, speaking to young people, it's about telling you, your dream is attainable. Your dream is right here. You just got to grab it. And when you grab it, you got to show everybody. I would say you got to be the best at what it is. So if you want to be a ditch, ditch digger, you better go to work and aspire to be the best darn ditch digger there is. Because you know what? And then you better decide, how am I going to start my ditch digging company? Because this is cute for a moment, but I want to move on. I want to elevate myself. And I know each and every one of you, you've got life and you're breathing, you can do it. You can do it. And if you're getting your great foundation from Linden and the school system here, you can do it. Because I don't think Linden, Linden leaves no stone unturned when it comes to making sure you have what you want. From guidance counselors to job fairs to, to, to education fairs, you can do it. So I want you to make sure no matter what it is that you do. And I am into the girl power. No, nothing against the guys, but I'm into the girl power. Because sometimes we are led down a road that is not quite as aggressive. you know. And I'll tell you a story as, as we get to the dessert portion of a recipe that I'm now going to get manufactured because someone said, you want to go to college? You should take home economics just in case. I'm like, well, I don't want to cook. But look how it all comes full circle. I'm now producing for the Food Network. And now I have a product that I have now um, worked on for 30 years that's a little bit better that I'm going to get manufactured. Who knew? So that, that, that's one of the things I want to let you know. Just make sure you find out what it is that you like because when you do uh, or you're in a career or a job that you like, it's not work. It's really not work. So after graduating high school, I mean, um, after graduating Fairleigh Dickinson, um, my senior year there, I was doing a internship for a show called, <clears throat> excuse me, for a show called Live with Regis and Kathy Lee. Again, you guys are probably too, too young to know that too. That show was on Channel 7 ABC, and I had, I had a work ethic. Of, if there's nothing else I had, I had a work ethic. And I would work, 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 and give it my all no matter what. Well, a young lady took me under her wing. And I think that's one of the things I think you have to do. You have to get a mentor. You have to tell someone, I want to do job A, B, and C, and I want you to, to take me under your wing. I want to be inspired by you. And this woman named Dolores took me under her wing. And I think it's because I talk a lot. Um, I always went to her and said, I'm not busy. Give me something to do. And she would give me some jobs like, okay, go do some research on this type of story. Go do some research on that type of story. And I'm bring it back and say, okay, I'm done. What else can I do? And so as a result, she gave me an opportunity to put together my first television, what they call a segment, which is only like a three or five minute segment on fashion. And I was shaking in my boots, oh my God. And she let me write it. She let me do all the steps that it took. And then after she gave me that opportunity to, to do that a few times, she then allowed me to interview my first celebrity. And I went home that Friday night with a stomachache, like, what am I going to ask this man on Monday? And it was, again, you guys are so young. There's a guy, a, a comedian named Sinbad. And so I got on the phone with him, shaking, quaking, and just started a conversation. Because you know what I did? I went home, I took his information home, and I read it, and I wanted to know, how is it to grow up with brothers and sisters? Or how is it that your mother and father are so religious and you doesn't use bad language in his comedy act? So you just, you went home and you studied. Because 
work is just like, you know, at school, you, you think you're working hard now, you're gonna work even harder when you are, when, you, when you're out of school. Now, this day I was supposed to start at Fox, I was not feeling well at all. I mean, I was, I was supposed to go for my interview uh, for a company called HBO, and I did not feel well. So I called them and said, I don't feel well. I'm gonna call you back when I feel better and reschedule. And the lady said, mm, no, we'll call you. Which says to me, what? They're not calling. I went upstairs, I said, you know, I'm gonna bite the bullet on this one. It's just, it is what it is. I get my phone rings that afternoon at about 12.31. It's Fox Television, they wanna know, can you get come on the phone? Get on the phone, somebody resigned, they didn't leave us any notice. They had a facility in New Jersey, we want someone from New Jersey, can you come in? And I'm thinking, it's Friday. I'm like, yeah, what time Monday? No, can you come in today? You're not gonna get a second chance. I pulled myself together, I went in for the interview, and that was my, my launch into the professional world of television. And I worked there for a year. And I screened cartoons, Disney films, um, and you're, you're screening them because they're in their raw state. And now the cartoons were fine. You were logging down commercial time. It was boring. But I kept looking at it as my foot is in the door and I didn't have to move to the Midwest to get into a, a television station. So my foot's in the door and I screened movies. And the whole process of screening, and this was when, when editing was done on some, uh, some of the shows was done on film. You're listening, you're listening for anything that's profanity, you're listening for anything that's a religious or a racial slur, and you just became very keen to listening to things that were um, just thrown at you on, on, on the tape. And stayed there a year, and when I had my review, uh, one of the folks asked me, are you, you look like you're not happy. I'm like, no, it's not that I'm not happy. This is not where I wanna spend my life. So it's about speaking up. What do you wanna do? I wanna work on that live morning show called Good Day New York. You never said that. I didn't think I had, a, it was not my place to say it until I had this job worked out inside and out. I could go there on a Saturday if they, a Saturday if they needed me because I worked so hard. And so the, and so the key is working hard, speaking up. Because if I hadn't spoken up, I'd still be in that little room probably no bigger than this little countertop, putting tapes in and just screening and look, looking for bad words and looking for profanity. And, and, and so the fact that I said to my, uh, my boss, Joe, I'm not happy and it's not, the, it's not the job, but I aspire for more. He says, I'll set you up with an interview in New York. And, and, and about New York, I'm a Linden girl. My heart fell on my feet. Me go to New York? Got myself together, had an interview at New York. And the gentleman who was executive producing the morning show said, listen, we're looking to expand the staff. We're gonna expand the staff with a person coming in entry level. So I went from one entry level job to another entry level job. And they gave me an opportunity to work on morning news. And when I worked on morning news, I was driving into New York City at two, three o'clock in the morning because at the time news was going on the air at five o'clock. I'm driving into the city and I'm seeing all my 20 somethings coming out of the nightclubs. I'm like, oh my God, I'm missing something. No, you're not. Because when it's all said and done, you choose, you make choices. And the choices that to work hard, whether it's in, what, right now for you, it's in school, then your choices to work hard while you're in college, your choices to work hard when you get that entry level job, that's your choice. My choice was to, you know what, there's plenty of time. And I went out and I had girlfriends that we went out and we hung out. But all that stuff, when you get, when you, when you, when you start climbing the ladder, you'll see it doesn't matter that for me it doesn't matter to have the fanciest pocketbook or the fanciest clothes or the best car all that comes it, it comes because you're doing what you like and everything starts falling into place you start getting some wonderful experiences no matter whether you're working in banking or the medical field or television you'll meet people you'll form friendships you'll get mentors and, and then your life will just start blossoming and you'll start growing in a way that you never thought possible I worked at Fox Television for about three or four years and I climbed the ranks I worked as a production assistant and that meant doing anything from fixing the coffee to loading up the paper towels to going to the tape library and pulling tapes whatever it took to get that show on the on the air because everybody played a part um, to get that show on the air um, you did and then after I did that for about six or seven months they linked me with a business reporter and so I worked on business news and I learned everything about stocks and then some. And at first I didn't understand. I'd scratch my head and say, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? And I asked myself that a lot, but never wavering on, this is where I want to be. This is what I want to do. And I worked with for a business reporter. And then we worked for the, I worked for the business reporter for about 
eight or nine months and the position opened up and then I work with the celebrity team, booking celebrity guests on the show, which is fun, but it's a lot of work because when you're sitting there at five o'clock and you think it's quitting time and your guest is coming in from LA, five, four, three, two, it's only two o'clock LA time. So you're there. So it wasn't unusual that you'd leave the office at eight or nine o'clock at night and then turn back around if that guest was coming in the next morning to be on the show. You're back on a seven o'clock in the morning train to make sure, hi, how are you? Because everybody wants to feel that they just didn't talk to you, that they felt that you cared about them. And so there were days like that. And there were days where you worked overnight. There were days that you spend the night, you spent the night in the, in the office, you know, because you had to do what needed to be done to keep the show on the air or get the, the show on the air. And in that big umbrella of, of morning television, bad news still happens. And so while you're doing the stuff that's fluffy and the fashion and the food and all the fun stuff, something happens in New York or something happens across the country that warrants you to have to drop what you're doing and focus on that. And there from bad weather stories to fires to, because at the end of the day, news was still our priority. I used to go out with a news reporter in the morning, scared every single day of my life, getting in a station car, driving to Brooklyn and the Bronx and meeting the reporter and to the point where I said to the reporter one day, I, I want to ride with you. So if that means coming in early, I'll come in extra early and meet you with the newspaper and you know, so you were you were on the field, you were out in the field, you're at a fire, you're finding the fire chief, you're never too ashamed to go over and say, excuse me, we're on the air in five minutes. I need I need you to come over and talk to us just for a minute. Because it was all about making sure you didn't have just a reporter standing there. You had to make good judgment calls. So all the, but all that training comes in right from school. Because you make that judgment to do your homework. You make that judgment if you don't understand something, you ask a question. So it, Although you may not see it now, it all comes full circle. So, worked at Fox, went through the ranks of business, celebrity, hard news, overnight, and moved up the ladder. And then someone said, I know the station starting called the Food Network. And I'm thinking, I am not going to the Food Network because this person lost their mind. And they said, you at least have to come for an interview. A friend of mine went for an interview and she's like, I don't know, Sonia, I'm working out of an apartment. And if you know an apartment, a, a whole apartment in New York is about as big as this, living, as this area right here. So I walk, I get out of the subway and I'm like, okay, I'm looking for this building because my interview is on 57th Street and these look like apartment buildings. And I walk up and I'm walking down the hallway that looks like a hotel. And I go in and I'm like, I'm in trouble. Because if I go home and tell my father I'm quitting my job to come work at a place that looks like an apartment, he's going to think I've completely lost my mind. But I kept reading the information about the industry. Food is a multi-billion dollar industry. Everything we do is around food. We celebrate around food. We mourn around food. We, weddings are around everything we do. We're having a conversation around food. It could be something simple. It could be something elaborate. So life also throws you opportunities where you have to say, you know what? I have to step out of my comfort zone. But I have to know that I know enough where I am that if I ever have to go back, I can go back. I can go back to Fox or any other news station because I've learned everything. I know how to dig deep and find the, the, the right guest or find the right story. But let's roll the dice on this. Let me go see what this food network is. Since the whole slogan was, well, why not the food network? Everybody eats. Okay, and that's what I went home and told my father. He said, are you crazy? You're gonna leave a job? But this also came from a man who worked his whole life at one job because that's what they did back then. Now you have to get experience, learn it and then take it somewhere else and be the smartest person at that next place you go to. And you take all that information at that next place and you take it somewhere else. And they go, wow, that kid sure is smart. Because it's about moving around and it's about diversifying all the information that you're learning in your field and bringing it somewhere else. And so the Food Network starts and I work on the Food Network and we work on a show called Food News and Views. Who knew there could be news about food? Well, there is. Everything you do, it's business news about food. It's food about, it's about chemicals. It's about, now it's even, it's bigger. You know, there's uh, the whole natural and the, and, and the organic. There's stories like you wouldn't believe. There are people feeding homeless. That's a food story. But it's about finding the, um, the bread and butter of the story. No pun intended. But it's about finding the bread and butter of the story um, to make it newsworthy. And so Food Network starts. I work there for a little bit, uh, for a little while. And knew that everything I learned there opened up another opportunity for me. 
And so another opportunity a couple of years later opened up for a station called News Talk Television. And it was all talk all the time. And we were talking from sun up to sundown. And I wasn't talking, but my hosts were. And I was afraid to start that job. And at that particular time when that opportunity came across my plate, I had to make a decision because I was in the process of getting ready to make a purchase. Um, I was getting ready to buy my house. And I went to this woman after I told her I was going to take the job. And I went back to her and said, I can't take it. Because I have to have consistency on my credit that I'm not jumping from job to job so I can get my mortgage. And she was devastated. She said, you told me you were going to take this job. You're starting next week. And I said, I got to do what's right for my life. And I got to Long story short, this woman called me back in two months and said, did you ever get your house together and get that stuff taken care of? And I said, yes. She goes, well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that you had enough guts to take care of yourself. That job is still available for you. So I went to a place called News Talk Television. And like I said, we did news, we did news from sunup to sundown. And it's funny because some of the folks that I still see now to this day on CNN, um, on Fox News, I'm like, they used to be some of the folks we would call. We did we did something called Radio Roundup, where we called the top radio stations in the country, and we wanted to find out what the vibe was about a big story. So what are they saying in Washington? What are they saying in Michigan? What are they saying in California? And some of those same people that you call now are like, oh my God, those are the relationships you build. And those relationships, those people will now call me and say, hey, Sonia, I'm looking for A, B, and C. Can you help me? Or I can call them and say, I'm coming to the area. Can you help me? or I have a friend coming to the area, or I have a student that's looking for a job, and it's about building those relationships. So all these years in, in, the, in this field, you develop these relationships, and you keep on um, you know, in, in, in touch with these folks, and you let them know, and you work for them, and you do volunteer work, you do internships, you know, because when people say you do an internship and you say, I don't wanna work for free, you are getting paid. You're getting paid with one, working for a great company, you're getting paid with experience, and you're walking out of there 10 steps ahead of your, col uh, your, your, your classmate because you have now worked in a professional environment. Um, from the Food Network, back to Fox Television, and then after Fox for almost another eight to 10 years, 9-11 took place and I was tired. Bad news was good news in the newsroom because it just creates a, um, an energy. And it's almost sad that that kind of energy gets people going, oh my God, there's a, there's a plane crash, oh my God, there's a fire, and you're just running around, because bad news, you're looking for the big story, and bad news is good news in the newsroom. <clears throat> and after 9-11 took place, and it was just, I was drained, and I just said to my business partner, she says, you know, we're doing good television, we're telling good stories, we're, we're working hard, let's, let's go start our own company. I was like, I don't know, my family's gonna think I'm crazy, just like they thought I was crazy when I left and started, went to the Food Network. And 13 years ago, we started a company called Powerhouse Productions. And we knew we just couldn't jump right out there and say, okay, we're, we're a new te television production company, and yes, we worked in TV, and yes, we should be given a fair shot because we're good at what we do. It doesn't work that way. Starting from the bottom. And so there were people who wanted to be on TV, and we call this media training. There were a lot of magazines out there who want to have, you'll see, it, you'll see it a lot, you'll see a magazine editor come on TV. And they're talking about the latest fashion trend or whatever the article is, that's the big article. A lot of those people were good writers, but they didn't know how to present themselves on television. So my business partner and I, we'd bring them to a counter and we'd role play and we'd teach them how to be good on TV. And then from, and while we're doing that, because we still need a paycheck coming in, you know, so we did that for a lot of magazines. And while we're doing that, we're looking for companies. We're looking for television stations that will give us a break to, to create a show for them. Well, there was a new station starting up called TV One. And TV One was the rival to BET. And if, if, any of are you guys familiar with BET? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, TV One was the folks that were going to show that it was more to um, the African American culture than just music. And TV One started a lifestyle station. And we, my business partner and myself, had, um, a, I say a dear friend, we had a woman who said, if you guys can sell a TV show with my name attached to it, it was Patti LaBelle. Think you're crazy, but go ahead and do it. And so what we did was we called TV One before they even launched, and there was a woman by the name of Loretta. I don't know what Loretta's name is, but all I know is she was the secretary to the president of the company. So we picked up that phone and, hey Loretta, how are you? What's going on? How's everything going? What's the progress like? Do you think we can get a call with Jonathan? Who is this? No, he's not available. Hey Loretta, how you doing? 
It's your girls from New Jersey again. You think we can get a call? With, we can get a meeting with Jonathan? No, he's busy. He's busy. Then we met someone who we knew for years who was working, who just got hired for that network. And we said, could you set us up for a meeting? He said, listen, I'll set you up for a meeting, but this man's only going to give you 15 minutes of his time because he is super busy. It's a new network starting. Like, listen, we have 10 ideas that we can bring him. He says, you can bring your 10 ideas, but I think you should just talk about the first two that you think can, that can make it. This man sat down with us. We talked to him. We told him what we can do. We can bring you Patty LaBelle. We can do a lifestyle show. We can keep it within budget, we think. And <laughs> we're just going to do it. We're going to do it because if it meant paying for it ourselves, we were going to do it. And we couldn't afford to do that. We were going to make it work. And he thought, you guys can bring me Patty LaBelle. Yeah. And then we just started talking because, again, we created a quick relationship with this man in his conference room. And the person who told us we were going to get 15 minutes was wrong. Because 50 minutes, 5-0. This man is walking us, the president of the company, to the elevator, saying, you girls, speak my language. I like you girls. You guys got such good energy. Oh, I'll try you. I'll try out anything with you guys. And you bring me this first show that you say you can bring me, and we got a relationship for life. This man is still our mentor. We, give a, we gave a, uh, an event in New Orleans. This man flew out from New York to come to our event. We did a screening in New York recently for a new documentary we worked on. This man flew out to us. So this man, Jonathan Rogers, is like, I, I'd say, a father figure because he gave us an opportunity, believed in us when sometimes we were like, are we sure we did the right thing? You're kind of questioning yourself. And we created a relationship. So now we have relationships after 13 years with him. And now he's, he's, he worked at CBS for a while. He worked at TV One for a while. He's on the board of lots of stations. And we have relationships with now all the folks at the Food Network because we work there. You, you're and getting to that point where you're gonna have to <coughs> present yourself, you're gonna have to shake hands, you're gonna have to make yourself known. Because the person that gets the call back is the person that has that good personality. It's so like, what was that girl's name who had that um, red shirt on? I like how I like what she said. She doesn't have the experience, but you know what? She has that energy that I. She's teachable. So those are the kind of things that you have to do. You have to always remember that relationships are the key, and that's the thing that keeps my business partner and I afloat. Now, we have just completed a documentary, our first documentary, after producing lots of food shows and lots of lifestyle shows and makeover shows. We did our first documentary called Harlem on My Plate. And it uh, traveled through the migration to present day and how food is the thing that no matter what goes on, food is the constant that makes seems to make us all happy. From back then, from the great, great, great grandmothers cooking and selling and serving food to keep a roof over their family's head, to today where you have these million dollar restaurants opening up, which people are working at in food, keeping a roof over their head. So relationships, Hard work, getting yourself out there, no job too big for you, no job too small for you. Always, always, always present yourself, shake a hand, ask someone that their job interests you, say, you know what, your job interests me. You think you could take me along with you one day? Because anybody who is thinking the right, to, for me, we've been very fortunate and blessed. So if you come to me and say, I need help, I want some advice, and I don't give it to you, I'm not walk in the walk that I preach. Because it's my job now to tell the next generation, you know what, you can do it. This is what you need to do. This is how you need to do it. And so my, my company is called Powerhouse Productions and we have an array of television shows um, out there. But primarily right now we're doing some, um, a lot of things around food. Like I mentioned the documentary. The documentary was labor of love for my business partner and I. We got thrown an opportunity and the folks who were uh, taking care of this documentary said do you think you can do it in eight weeks and we're like yeah we can do it we can do it well from sun up to sundown uh, my husband my mother my brothers my sisters I'm like you all take care of my family because we have work to do and we would get up at the crack of dawn I was out of my house every morning at 6 30 some days I wasn't coming home till one o'clock in the morning day in and day out for eight weeks but guess what that documentary got, so, and it, this documentary was only supposed to kick off a food festival because we wanted to have something a little more important at a food festival other than folks just coming there to eat. Well, the documentary got such good reviews that now it's in a festival. And so the New York, um, the New York City International food, uh, Film Festival, and which is a big deal because these festivals that you get your, your, your product, your projects in, you get, you, if you get a, a win out of three um, festivals, you automatically go to the Oscars next year. So it, it, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a chain 
You know, so if you do A, then B can happen. You do B, then C can happen. And then the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. So we, we have that. And that, the only thing I, I want to just kind of drive home to you is that the sky is the limit. The opportunity is here for you to take. You guys are going to be going to the high school. You guys have got to, got to, got to take advantage of every opportunity. Talk to your teachers. I don't expect you to know at this stage what exactly it is that you want, but some things that you like, some things that you're good at. And the things that you're good at, hone those skills and make that the, 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 the career path that you take. Don't let anyone, because had I listened to my family, I'd be sitting at a desk somewhere, bored out of my wits, probably going to work unhappy every day, getting my paycheck, but doing working in television and working in uh, this communication environment that I do. I love it. And I did, like I said earlier, I feel guilty some days where I can just kind of crawl out of bed and sit at my kitchen counter. And Believe you me, your dream, it's, it's there. It's there for the taking. But you too have to go and ask to see what is out there. Use that internet. Find out what programs are out there. But most importantly, you got to stay in the books. You've got to stay in the books. Anybody else from this side? Have any ideas? No? So what do you like to do? I'm, how many of you like video games? Love video games. I think everybody's hands should go up. Do you know that is a career that you can create apps, video apps, and applications for all these? I don't even know the new names. I know this PlayStation 4 and all these other things. What's it called? Um, Xbox, Xbox and all. I know there's someone that with a great science background that can knock that out of the park. Yes, dear. Actually, there is a career called streaming, and I already started. I'm actually kind of high. Like a bit. See that's see that that's important because when you find something that you like and you start now, I, I was I was like to look at some of the um the young performers, you know, like the Beyonces and the, some of the young performers in the and out there. They started when they were young. And so if you're starting now, by the time you get thirty, you can be like, Oh, I've been doing this my whole life. People are like, You're only thirty, what do you mean your whole life? Yeah, I started when I was fifteen or I started when I was fourteen. And that puts you leaps and bounds. Um uh, uh, beyond your peers, beyond your peers. And then, and then you move to the head of the class. And it's all about moving to the head of the class. It's not about competing and really outdoing your, your, your classmate, but it's about being the best that you can be and showing off your talents. Not belittling anyone else's talents, but showing off your talents. Because you know what? All these fields are tough fields. And the cream of the crop get the opportunities. Where, now, who else out there? Kathy had something to say. No, you want to be a pediatrician? Okay, that's great. That's great. Any other questions? So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to, we have a little uh, show. Um, it's called Turn Up the Heat with Chef G. Garvin. He's one of the folks that I met many, many years ago. And this is one of the shows that we did in the early 2000s when we would go out to California. And just to give you a quick idea of what goes into this, we're going to look at the show. But before we even get to the show, we sit down. We talk about show topics. We're going to do a show on chicken. We're going to do a show on Caribbean food. We're going to do a show on pastas and Italian food. I mean, there's a variety. It's all about tuna. And we make not just tuna fish sandwiches, but we're grilling a real tuna fish. So there's all kind of brainstorming that goes into um, doing these shows and coming up with the, the ideas and then getting the bullet points. And, and the chefs are so helpful because they're so knowledgeable about food. So they lead us in a way. And then we say, well, what, what kind of plate is going to is that fish gonna look good on? So, oh, it's a, it's a fish and it's raw steak and it's got the skin on it, so we want a white plate. Or what kind of plate are you gonna put that pasta in? Well, it's pasta in a red sauce, so a white dish would go good. Or you wanna vary up. We used white dishes for the last show, so all kind of things go into that. When we're doing a show, you might see a pile of chopped onions. And you're like, oh, that's going in there? No, but for TV, abundance looks good. You know, so you want it to look lush and you want things to look really nice so when we're doing a tv show we come in we'll, we we rent someone's house we usually rent someone's house that has the cooktop right here on the stove so they're cooking and talking to the camera we look at their refrigerator well we like stainless steel so this house is perfect as it is we can't use this house because stainless steel is our <laughs> signature for that person um we like to have um the cooktop in the middle and the, the cooktop is back there. Can't, you know, so the, all kind of things go into it. Now there's some shows, now we just did a cooking show where the range was in the back because the person had a lot of recipes where they didn't have to do a lot of cooking. They did, they did a lot of preparation here and they did the cooking in the back. 
So there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, is it a house where the person can cook and then serve right here on the counter? Or is it is the dining room right off of the kitchen or alongside of the kitchen so we can do nice long sweeping shots? So it's a lot of things that go into it and we go out and we scout and we're taking pictures with our camera and we're, some person, someone will stand right here and, and we'll say, well, you be the host and we'll take pictures to see how far back we can get, how we can make it look um, really good. So if you're home watching, you're like, Wow, that's a beautiful kitchen. Wow, that food is good. It's it's just the whole package. It's the whole package. So, a lot of it, a lot of uh, effort and energy goes into that. It's sometimes we go and we just wipe the whole person's countertop clean. It's like, nope, it's a great countertop. It's a great look, but it's a man and he can't have candles like this because it's too feminine. So we'll put a pepper mill or we'll put side towels. We'll, we you know we dress the set a little bit differently to make it. Um, fit the person's personality. So a lot of it goes into that. So I'm gonna let you take a peek at the show and um, and then we'll come in and we'll we'll just do some some simple French foods that I looked up and I always say I'm not a chef, but I've been around chefs a lot. I've learned some techniques. I've always loved to cook. Um, but we'll show you just some simple things and I'll show you some simple things where while it's a French recipe, there's a way to alter it to make it you know satisfying to your taste buds. Okay? Check it out. Hey, what's up? It's your boy G. Garvin, and today we're doing it Caribbean style. I got a great leg of lamb. We're going to curry it up for you <sighs> real smooth. And then I got a coconut, beans, and rice. Coconut, beans, and rice, baby. I'm going to bring it home, as I always do, with a Jamaican-style jerk main lobster tail with some snapper. And guess what? I'm going to saute some plantains for you. Really, really nice. It's your boy G. Garv. Turn up the heat style. Carry it away Caribbean. Whew. I'm gonna carry it away. Lamb, beans, rice, lobster, jerk it out, jerk it out, jerk it out. It's your boy G. Garv. Oh, man. It's beautiful. Turn up the heat style. Yo, in case you was outside playing in the yard or something, it's carried away Caribbean. Most of the time, people like to curry goat, curry chicken, whatever you're gonna do. But today, your boy's gonna curry the lamb for you. So let's jump right in. It's carried away Caribbean. And this is lamb. And you can get this in loin, you can get this uh, boneless, skinless, you can get this on the bone, uh, leg of lamb, breast of lamb, whatever you want to do. I've taken a whole loin, and what we're going to do is just kind of break it down. We're going to chop it up, and then we're going to saute it with some garlic, some shallots, some scotch bonnet, some allspice, some onions, some scallions, some basil, and really hook it up real nice, okay? Take a chef's knife. Cut it in half, because you're not going to use it all, you know. Keep in mind, you're just doing a stew, so it doesn't really matter about the size. Uh, nothing's too big, nothing's too small. Depending on how many people you got coming over, it's going to determine how much lamb you actually use, all right? I already got my pot going, because I want to make sure it's hot. Make sure once I get the lamb in there, it's going to cook right away for me, obviously without burning my scallions uh, and my garlic, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So let's say you've got mm, eight, eight people coming over for a dinner party. You want to make sure you've got enough for at least, you know, two rounds, OK? One of the things I want to talk to you about is always use the right knife when you're doing something like this. So now, here's the deal. Rinse my hands off for a second. OK. Keep in mind, also, when you get that lamb, it's available at any butcher shop, any grocery store. Lamb is a really, really common product these days, OK? I got my pan going, and it's already really hot. Now, typically with me, as you know, I would add the garlic and the shallots to get that flavor. But because it's so hot, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to add the meat first and then cool it down, OK? But you really want to get it nice and hot you know, when you're doing this red meat like this, okay? Wooden spoon. Now, don't worry about it because it's gonna cool down in a second, okay?
Okay. Now see, it's already cool. So let's go with the garlic and the shallots. And this is a stew, so you can go heavy. You know I gotta have shallots because I love them. Okay? Let's get the onions in there. I rough cut these onions. You can cut them larger if you like, and you can cut them small if you like. It just depends on what you wanna do, all right? Now, make sure this stays nice and hot, all right? Because you got a lot of stuff to cook, and you don't really want it to slow it down. You don't want it to start broiling. You wanna make sure it's cooking. Okay, now, if you start getting confused as to what to do next, what you can do is just take a look at what you have, and keep in mind, I'm not gonna do the curry yet because I wanna add the curry after the liquid, which is the lime juice and the uh, coconut, okay? I'm gonna go ahead with my ginger, all right? And then I've got the scotch bonnet. This is a style of a pepper, very, very hot. So let's go half, just to be safe. I got some allspice, you notice I'm doing all my dry first. Some allspice, all right? And I got some fresh thyme. All right? Now, as always, I'm building from the bottom and coming up. You know what I mean? A little parsley right there, too. Now, let's come back and season this right before we do the curry. Okay? Season that lamb up. And you can go a little heavy with the seasoning on this because once you add the chicken stock and the liquids, you're gonna lose some of the seasoning anyway. All right? Bring out the big dog, like that right there. You know what I mean? It's just carried away Caribbean. You know what I'm saying? You can go get one of the things you want right now. You know, just kind of relax while we work it out, okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and add my lime juice. Okay, now, the coconut. You see how it started to slow down? That's what you want. That's why you don't need to be scared, you know, once you, uh, once you put that meat in for the first time because it's all, you know, sizzling and hot, because it's going to slow down anyway. Now, curry. Nice spread, OK? You don't want to just put it in one place. You want to spread it out, all right? You know, I'm good for working with you, you know what I mean? Like we say down in, uh, in the ATL, working with you, all right? So now, let this simmer two and a half, three minutes before I do my chicken stock. Guess why? because I want to make sure I bring out all the flavor. Once you get that curry inside, saute it. Let it do what it's going to do. You know how when you put them good dress shoes on and you, you know, a couple of times before you leave the house? It's the same thing. Get in there, let that curry do what it's going to do, and then you add everything else. There's no reason to hurry. So that's been going for a couple of minutes already. I'm going to add my scallions, OK? A lot of flavor in these scallions. Don't sleep on the scallions, all right? Now. You see what I got? I mean, this really, really, really is very, very good and very easy. I'm gonna grab some of this fresh basil. Some of you might know how to roll it, you know, well, roll it, but just close it. How about that? We just close it up. This is called a chiffonade, and this is just gonna add some flavor. All right, no worries. Only thing green that smells and tastes as good as this basil it's probably rosemary. OK, here's the deal. Small amount of butter. And now, chicken stock. Mix this one more time, and I want you to scrape the bottom. See what I'm doing? I'm kind of scraping around, and I'm getting all of that curry that I let stick. I'm letting it come loose, because that's all my flavor, OK? Like my man used to say, I'm in heaven, I'm in heaven. You cover this baby up like that right there, 25, 30 minutes, keep your eye on it. We gonna carry you away Caribbean style with your boy G. Garb, turn up the heat, and then coconut, beans, and rice, you better not move, because if you do, you might miss out. Hop. Hey, it's your boy G. Garvin. This is Carried Away Caribbean. We still doing it for you, baby. Got the curry lamb already going. Now, 
we got to do the coconut, beans, and rice. I'm gonna show you how to make a jerk seasoning. Okay, let's go with the coconut, beans, and rice. Couple of ways you can do this. You can get beans already cooked. You can get beans that are dried. You can soak them overnight. No big deal. The rice is very simple. You know, typical rice is fine for this. What I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna add garlic to this. I'm gonna add some shallots though, all right? I like to twist it up a little bit. And right away, I'm gonna add my rice. Very, very simple. Because what I like to do is saute the rice a little bit, make sure it cooks. I already washed the rice, so it's all good. See how quickly it cooled down? A lot of times when people make rice, they just boil it. To me, that's really not getting the maximum flavor. What you can do is take the coconut cream and just add it in there like that. All right? Now just mix it up a little bit. That's OK, because you're going to cool it down anyway. All right? Fresh herbs, like so. Now I'm still sauteing. See how it starts to cool down? That's what you want. I'm gonna, just like when we did the curry, you wanna get the maximum flavor, okay? Now you don't really need to rush this, but you also don't need to let it cook too long, all right? So once it starts to cool down and you're sure that you got the maximum flavor from the coconut cream, what you could do is go ahead and add your stock. Now, as always, you can use chicken stock, vegetable stock, or just regular water, okay? Now, this is about halfway. What I'm gonna do is let this cook till about almost done, and then I'm gonna add my beans, okay? I'm gonna add a little more stock to this so that it, uh, I make sure it cooks all the way. Okay? So now, and of course, if it starts to absorb the stock, you can just add more liquid, no big deal. Now, I'm good to go there. Now, you can buy, you know, the jerk seasoning, or you can make it, it's, it's pretty simple. Okay, so I got some onions, some scallions, brown sugar, lime juice, soy sauce, allspice, scotch bonnet, garlic. I've got some thyme, some nutmeg, some ground clove, and I've got some cinnamon. So what we're gonna do is put it all together. I'm sure you probably got a food processor at the house. So let's start with the onions. Now I'm gonna turn my rice down because I don't want it to cook too, too fast, okay? okay? All right, so let's get the onions in there. I'm not gonna use them all because, you know, don't wanna run out of space. Okay, so let's start there. I'm gonna parade these babies up. And always hold the top. Even though it's got a top on it, make sure you still hold the top, okay? Okay, now you can do it really, really fine. It just depends on how you want your marinade. Or you can do it kind of rough, okay? Okay, now open it up. Scrape the sides, okay? See how you got on the top, you got those pieces that didn't really fray up. So you scrape the sides down, and let's hit it one more time, all right? Okay. That way we get a nice, even consistency on it, all right? Everything is nice and even. Okay, now, let's go ahead and add the rest of the onions now that we know we got a little bit of space, all right? Always add two instead of trying to take away from, all right? So we're looking good there. All right, now, and then of course, if you want to control the spice, it's the scotch bonnet. Uh, obviously, if you add more scotch bonnet, it's gonna be really spicy, and if you add less, it's gonna be less spicy. So keep that in mind, all right? So now let's add that. I'm gonna add half what I have. And actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and get the garlic in here as well. There we go. Let's get our spices in there. Knock it out, all right? Double time on it. Ooh. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Get that brown sugar in there. 
Now, again, let's add half just to make sure we don't run out of space. Now, because it's pretty full, and even though we think it's gonna drop down, let's do this before we add our liquids just to be safe. Okay? Nice and smooth, it's coming together. It gets kind of spicy, so. All right. So we got a nice ground. Now let's do the liquids. Soy sauce, lime juice, all right? Pretty simple so far, right? Okie dokie, smoky. All right. Machine is just perfect. Okay. So now, let's give it a taste. And we're gonna do a very small taste because we wanna be careful. It tastes very good. I'm gonna get this baby, put it in a bowl, and then I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna add them beans to that rice. I'm gonna take that lobster tail and that snapper. I'm gonna jerk it out because it's carried away Caribbean, and that's how we do, all right? So it's your boy G Garv, turning up the heat, carried away Caribbean style. so far, right? Carried away Caribbean, baby, with your boy G. Garvin. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Just knocked out the jerk spice. You didn't even have to buy it. See how good we did? Okay, my rice is almost ready, so now's the time to add the beans, because we got coconut beans and rice. Now, what I did was cook the rice about halfway. I'm gonna add a, just a pinch of butter, okay? and let this just kind of come together, all right? Now, I'm gonna cut to my jerk seasoning, okay? So, you remember everything I got in here, uh, not too spicy, but very, very good. Now, let's look at the snapper. This is boneless, skinless. I'm gonna take it and cut it in half so it's a little easier to work with, all right? Just like that. What I'm gonna do, I've got my grill pan already on so it's getting nice and hot. Season it first. Let's do it with a little salt, real quick, all right? Now, just, just like that, okay? That's all you're gonna do. Now, what you could do is if you wanted to, you can marinate this overnight. You know, since we don't really have the time, since this is what they call TV, we're gonna do it like this. Take your tongs, flip it over, and we're gonna do the other side. Okay, now, if this were super spicy, we'd only do one side. Now, keep in mind, my, my pan's getting hot, but we really want to get it nice and hot, because we can always turn it down. But when we start, we want to make sure we get that nice sear effect on it, okay? So let's come over here, just like that. See how I got it nice and smoky? See what I got, see what I got? Just like that. All right, put that snapper. Now just keep in mind, this will work for shrimp, any other seafood you had, chicken, the whole nine, all right? Just pop back over. Take a look at your rice, your beans, it's almost there. All right, now, carry away Caribbean with your boy G. Garve. Jerk snapper, main lobster, coconut beans and rice. It's almost ready. And then I'm gonna come back and put it all together for you with the sauteed plantains. I'm gonna carry you away Caribbean style, all right? That's what we're gonna do. Hey, it's your boy G. Garvin. This is carried away Caribbean style. Okay, almost home, almost there. Almost got you there. Let me show you how it looks in the store real quick before we saute these babies up. This is what you're looking at. When you go to the grocery store, plantains, this is exactly what you want right here. Puts you in the mind frame of a banana, obviously. Okay, so my oil is really, really hot. So what we're gonna do is drop a few in there and test them out. That's what happens when you're really cooking. You know, you may have to change things up. I want you to be careful though when you do this, all right? Gonna let them slide in there, because they're really slippery. And you're probably wondering why we did no flour or anything, because the natural sugar 
is going to allow them to go where they need to go. All right? I'm just going to meet them there. All right? See how they're coming together real quick? All right. So always use tongs with this. That's perfect. That's exactly what I want. You see that right there? All right, nice golden brown. You know, not too long. Or if you want to let them go a little longer, you can do that as well. It just depends on your style. So my oil is really hot. Actually worked out well for me. So let's pull these babies out. And they're going to soften up for us. OK. By the time we serve them, they're going to be nice and soft. Because the oil was so hot, they're going to continue to cook a little bit. But the color is perfect. Everything I want. Let's go ahead and start plating things up. We're going to start with this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful coconut beans and rice. Just like that. Dead center, you know, family style, just how we do. OK? Since we got the lobster tail, why don't we cut it a little bit so we got enough, you know, to go around instead of the whole tail, OK? All right? So the lobsters cook perfect, OK? So we set it up so that, you know, we don't forget our presentation. Never forget the presentation when you're working it out. Even though I carried you to the Caribbean, you still want to get there. You want to be nice and pretty, OK? Just like that. Now, how simple was everything we did? Uh, you see what I'm talking about? Take that snapper, OK? Come back like that. Then you top it off with that right there. Uh. What I would do if I was you, take them plantains, maybe do them like that right there. Boom. Then come back over here, like that. See, look, don't get scared. See, check, look here, watch this. See, you think I'm short one, but check me out. Uh, see what I did? You got to think a little bit, look. Uh. OK, boom. That's one right there, all right? Carried away Caribbean style. Check me out. Numero dos. We'll put a little bit of that rice in the bottom. Surprise, surprise. See, we like to keep it jazzy, all right? And then come back with that lamb, uh, like that right there. You see what I'm saying? I told you I was going to take you there. Look, uh. And see, now what I got, got that great lamb with that curry, that stew. Ooh. Look, just like that right there. I ain't even finished yet. OK, so what I'm going to do is, you know what I'm saying, I take on Faithful. Uh, uh. I hit it one time like that, just to make sure I'm ready, ready. And then uh, we like to, you know, sometimes, you know, we like to let it rain a little bit. You know what I mean? Bow, bow, like that right there. Let it rain just a little bit more. It's your boy G. Garvin, Carried Away Caribbean. We made the old jerk spice, lobster snapper. We did the coconut rice and beans. Your boy curry the lamb for you. And we got the five plantains. It's your boy G. Garvin, turning up the heat, Carried Away Caribbean style. I told you it's super simple, and I told you not to go nowhere. Now you know how to do it. You think you're Jamaica crazy now, huh? It's all right, though. I got you. I got you covered. It's your boy. Hey, for more information on menus and recipes, please go to www.tv1online.com or send a self-addressed stamp envelope to Turn Up The Heat, care of TV1, 1010 Wayne Avenue, 10th floor, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20910. Take it back, you know what I'm saying? Like the Bahamas, you know what I mean? Like Jamaica, you know what I mean? That kind of style. Take, take, take it there. <laughs> oh, yeah.
Again, I don't claim to be a chef. I just been I've been around it a lot, and I kind of have an eye for it. I, I have a love and a passion for cooking, and so that's why I'm here today. You know, not to not to say I'm a chef, but to say get in the kitchen, get involved, try new flavors. You're a French class. We're gonna try something that's French, but we're gonna also show you what happens when you can kind of change the flavor. We have a um, a, a French baguette here, and we're gonna you know show you what you can do with that French baguette to make it. Not just something that has a French flavor to it, but you know what, everyone may not like the blue cheese that goes on it. We'll kind of put a little spin on it to make it something that's a little more traditional of something that you have. Because you know what, at the end of the day, this country is just one big whole melting pot. So, and that's, and that's the thing that makes um, restaurants thrive, is that you may have a French background, but your business partner may have an Italian background and you merge, it's called fusion cooking. You fuse those flavors together and that's how you always see these chefs coming up with more and more and more recipes. So when I was asked to you know, come do a demo for you guys, I'm like, I'm not a chef, but what I can show you are some traditional easy recipes, which is a, uh, a French baguette with a blue cheese walnut spread and butter. And as we know, butter makes everything better. And we're gonna try that because it's all about widening your horizons too and trying something different. And then what I'll do for those picky folks out here is we'll have one that we'll do a little more traditional. We'll put butter and garlic on it and we'll put mozzarella cheese on it because I know there are some people out there that's like, I don't like blue cheese. But my, my big message is don't knock it until you try it. You give it a try because that also opens, widens your horizons to other people's cultures. So you may not have ever had um, maybe Spanish food. I would say try it because that was one of the, to me, one of the most in, uh, important things that happened to me when I was in college. I was African American. I had a roommate that was Jewish. She had never had traditional soul food. Her family turned me on to bagels and lox and fish, and and I've never been the same. And 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 and, and, and the same uh, token for me. I would bring her up things. She goes, "Is your mother cooking any of those uh, peas and rice?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And I bring it up, and she would say, and she was so cool. She go, "Dude, that food is good." And I'm like, "Yeah." And so. That too helps to me. It's always about bridging gaps and cultural and blur, to me, blurring those cultural lines because we are all the same. We just have to take a little bit of my culture, mix it with a little bit of your culture, and then we got one great big exploding culture. And so let's get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you to work because I'm not gonna do the work. I'm gonna put you to work. So I'm gonna start with the, the French bread. Is anybody else gonna come over and help? I'm gonna have Patrick. Patrick, yeah. you can open the bread. And who else wants to help? Uh huh, you're gonna open it. And I'm gonna have you put one piece on this cutting board. You're gonna hold this bread and you're gonna cut it open first. Yeah. Okay? So you're gonna yeah. no, you're gonna cut it open. Yeah. So let me just let me just give you a quick start the, the example. I'm gonna hold it here, right? Okay, folks, don't call me and say I, I was cutting it wrong. Because you know we cook. So you cut it open like this. I'll let you continue. So it opens up flat. Okay? Right, there you go. And you just open it up. Open it. There we go. Let me just take this a little bit right here. Okay. Okay, there you go. And like I said, I'm not a chef, but this is how we do it in my mother's kitchen. So I may not have all the proper techniques, but you know what? Everybody everybody doesn't go to culinary school and learn how to. Whoops, here we go. I'm just gonna put that open like that. Okay, so we open it up like this. Use that, use, yeah, use All that, over? use that muscle, yep, yeah, use okay. it. I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if it doesn't spread, you know, just, yeah. Uh -huh. There you go. Spread it. There you Somebody, go. Do you, do you have one for justice? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. So now, next, excuse me, dear. I'm gonna have you sprinkle a little bit of garlic, because you know what, also, Unlike a cooking show, when we cook at home, we cook right out of the cabinet. So that's a little, you gotta make it real. Make it real. Right? Oh, make it real. No. Oh, you said keep it real. <laughs> okay, shake. I do it every time. Shake, yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, I put too much. Okay, no, you didn't. So here you go. Let me tell you. When you figure, when you figure butter and garlic, you can't go wrong. Tell them. Okay. You do what's I'm gonna have you go take some cheese and you, and you can take it out because you washed your hands and put it on. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be generous. Be generous. Don't be cheap with that cheese. You better put a lot on there. I like that. Yeah. You, you see, there's a lot on there. Oh, so it's like 
Sticky. Yeah, it's like Texas toast. Okay. Okay. Well, that's okay. Here's some ranch. I'll believe that. Almost made me faint there. Okay. It's just very It smells like pizzeria. Oh, it's rotten cheese. No, it's not. No. It's aged. It's aged. It's aged. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So now that you have the butter and the cheese on it, oh, okay. There you go. Let's see. Big. And you gotta widen your horizon. So now we're gonna get the, 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 the tray. I know which one I'm having. Oh, we're gonna sample everything. Oh, God. Oh, he's all got it. So we'll put this one here. Oh, looks like I need the other tray, right? So we'll take this one. I'll let you put this in the oven. I'll let you put this in the oven. Got it? Okay. Okay. Stick it on the bottom shelf. There you go. Oh, be careful, careful. <laughs> I knew it. 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 Which I love. I'll eat it. I'll eat it. Oh, I'll eat it. Okay. How do you stand that? Anybody that? like to put the mushrooms on? Cheese. You know, sometimes it's acquire, you, you acquire a taste for certain things. And so smell it. And so when you're in the food business, again, it's about it's about um, widening your horizons. You know, it's like trying things that you would never try. And then once you do it, you're like, wow, that's good. It's like yogurt. You know, a lot of people don't like yogurt when they first try it. And then after a while, it kind of agrees with you. Kind of agrees with you. I um, when I was in the store yesterday, you know, for me. With having a family, it's all about sometimes getting in and out of the kitchen quickly, but it's also making sure it's good and yeah. making sure it's not fast food. So I try to make my own fast food. And when I walk past the Texas toast, I'm like, oh, I could just buy Texas toast and lay it out and put the, because it already has the butter and the garlic on it. You top it with the cheese, uh, the, the, the blue cheese and the walnuts. And there you have, you know, the same recipe, but a little bit quicker. And, and, and for, for busy people, and you know, all your moms and dads are working. They don't want to go to the fast food joint all the time. They want you to have something good. So it's all about giving it a try. And so, and, and then once you and once you kind of hone your skills a little bit in, in, on anything, it becomes easier. You enjoy it more. You can get in and out of the kitchen, and um, you go from there. I'm gonna let you sift, sift a little bit of garlic on here. Shake it, be nervous. Oh, that's a lot. Thank you. Oh, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Thank you. So much. Ooh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, okay, here we go. Okay, so we're just gonna. You did. You did. You did. That's okay. You did good. Okay, no, no. I was making a hat. That's why I never changed the Oh, stop it! Stop it! No. So this, this. I'm just gonna shake a little walnuts. Shake some walnuts out because, again, this again, this came from a French recipe. Again, widen, uh, widen your horizon. It does. It does good. Okay, here you go. This is going to go back in. And you're going to turn on the broiler a little bit. And then I'm going to move these trays up, though. Oh, and then I can slide. Oh, oh, look at that. Doesn't that look good? Doesn't that look good? Oh, there we go. Look at that texture. Delicious. Or something. Or something. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is good. I was hoping. Yeah. Most of it. All of it. I am behind you. Mm -hmm. But if you are allergic to nuts, you cannot have this one. No, the yeah. Walnuts. The walnuts. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
The blue cheese walnut spread is a little different from a typical garlic bread with mozzarella on it, but it just goes to show you so many different cultures have different different foods, but very similar. So it's just a, it's it's the French version of French bread with um, I mean the, 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 the Italian version of what we normally see with the mozzarella or the Parmesan cheese on it. Here you go. There's a there's a French dish called chicken cordon bleu. Anybody oh. ever had chicken cordon oh. bleu? I've, I've seen, seen it before. before. I know where it Yes. Uh, you've seen it at the Food Network. So chicken cordon good. bleu is just a chicken breast that's been pounded out with ham on it. Of course, seasoned with salt, pepper, and whatever your seasons of choice are. But pounded chicken breast with ham, a cheese, like a Swiss cheese in the middle. It's rolled. Sometimes it's dipped in a little batter with little breadcrumbs, and it's fried. And then I think after it's fried, you can like bake it off a little bit. Because we don't have that kind of time, and again, because I'm not a chef, I'm, a, I'm just a good old home cook, I found something online called skillet cordon bleu, which you take the chicken breast and you season it, and you sear it in a pan. You put a little, the ham, you chunk it up, and you put the ham in there, and you, what I call a, 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 a a jump start on your sauce because we're not going to make sauce from scratch with the heavy cream and the cheese and the garlic. So I bought a jar of cheese. Pour that cheese in, you add a little garlic, you add a little pepper, you add your other cheeses, you bring it to a little boil, and then when the pasta's done, you put it on top of the pasta. Now, because I like my family to get a little bit of vegetables when I'm fixing pasta, I like to take peas and carrots. Drop it right in the same water that the pasta's in, or either put it in the microwave just to make it tender, and I mix it all together. We'll mix it together, we'll put the sauce on top, we'll sprinkle with some cheese. Yum. Everybody all set? You wanna try it? Okay, good. Well, the chefs. We're gonna saute the ham first. Why? So because chicken, one second. Because chicken, when you cook chicken, you wanna make sure you do you don't cross contaminate. Because chicken sometimes you want to make sure you don't, you're not touching the same chicken with the thongs that uh, the tongs, thongs, hello, the tongs that you're turning it with. So you have a, a raw tongue, you have a cooked tongue. We'll get the pan hot. We'll put the chicken in. I have a plastic cutting board. I have a plastic cutting board. We'll put the chicken on the plastic cutting board, and then once we get in the pan, we put that cutting board in the sink and we wash it with hot, warm, soapy water. Again. Chicken is fresh, but you always worry about what they call cross-contamination. So I'm gonna get the chicken, the cutting board, and the, no, I'll get the ham and the cutting board, and we'll start from there, okay? I'm gonna put a little salt in the water. Just because, okay? I know, that's what I'm saying, I was like, Kelly and Karina, okay. Karina with a K or Karina with a C? K. Kelly with a K? Yeah. Okay, it's the K girls. All right, here we go. So, because I always say, it's, you know, safety first, I'm gonna let you use one cutting board, I'm gonna let you use this cutting board. And then after we finish, we're gonna wash this cutting board and use the chicken on this. So I'm gonna cut it down the middle. Okay, I'm gonna give you one piece of ham here, and give you one piece of ham. The ham is just adds some good flavor to a nice, Pot pasta dish, and then you have your pasta, your meat, and your veggies in there. So you're gonna take this and you're gonna, you're gonna just you're gonna cut it in strips. Strip, strip, strip. Okay, cut it in strips, and then after cutting the strips, you gotta cut it into cubes. Okay. chicken on this cutting board okay and I'm just gonna have you season it it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, 
Okay, there you it's go. It's a small one. So okay, so here. One. So mm -hmm. again, we're going to put a little garlic on it. Here's some garlic for you guys. Shake generously, but not, not too much. Yeah. You have to do it one time. No. Be, be generous. Yeah. yeah, be very generous. Yes, yeah, I don't want to do that. Taste like garlic. Yeah, I got two. No, you guys did this. I got two. 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 I got Are you talking about the You should you should name it. Well done with Don't use that either, that cutting with the knife. The chicken and the ham is going to get, the chicken's going to get diced and it's going to go into the pasta with a cream sauce and cheese, a creamy cheese sauce, a, a garlic parmesan um, already made the sauce. So pour that, okay? Pour that in the pot right there. Pour the whole thing, the whole thing. There you go. The whole thing, okay? Now I'll take this, because I like to rinse it out with a little bit of milk. You'll get another one? Pour the other one in. Okay. Good. Okay. Now go into the refrigerator. There's a container of milk in there. Okay. Pour, 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 pour. And that's up a little more. Why not? Okay, that's good. Now put the lid back on it, put it in the fridge. I'm going to make you be a little bit more generous. Oh, I didn't know you <laughs> this is garlic, honey. Garlic makes it better. Butter makes it better, okay? Just stir gently, though. Stir gently, you know? There you go. Oh, where's the key? Maybe two tablespoons of butter. I'm going to drop this in. It's condensed, condensed chicken soup. We don't call it by its brand name. And you scoop it into the pot, just small scoops, okay? Step aside on it. Take a little bit at a time and drop it in there. Because what happens is it needs to be able to melt. Okay? There you go. All right, Jen, I'll take this from you, my dear. And then you're going to mix. Okay. Just mix slowly, though, because you want to make sure that the milk is not sticking to the pan and scorching. Look at me. So you just got to make sure you mix it. You mix with girl power, okay? Go ahead. And get away from here. <laughs> Okay, I'm actually gonna take them out and sit them on the cutting board for grass. So you did get it that so and, and put them back in. Well, I'm gonna let those stay for a minute. This looks like it might be done. Well, that looks like it might not be done. Wow, that, that cooked really nice. See, normally I know we time is not on our time is not on our side. I know, but I want to. I normally let it cool. No time, let it cool. I let it cool before I cut it, and usually I cut it like. I hold it with my hand and cut it. Oh my god, do you smell it though? It smells really good. Oh, that's sweet. Okay. 
just a couple more minutes on this chicken because some of it was a little pink, but I see. Just adding a little color to it, you know. Let it cook in the microwave for about five minutes or so. What does your calendar look like? Yes. You know what? You can turn the flame off. We'll turn the flame off. This is where it's all coming together. As soon as the peas are done, we'll mix the peas, the sauce, the pasta, everything together. Give you this, you mix while I pour. Prettier. Yeah, no, I think we could serve them out of this. You know, we can. Yeah. Okay. Feeds a lot, yeah. Thank you, cheese on yes. Yeah. Is that everyone? Thank you. Oh, no. Thank you. It's good. You like it? Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So everything in French has to sound beautiful, and like when you go to a restaurant, you don't want to be rude, so you have to ask things politely, even for the tip. You know, you have to be polite about everything. And yeah, at cafe sometimes tip could be included, so you have to ask. We learned that French food always looks beautiful, and like it's not too much for everybody, but like it's just enough. So yeah, I learned that stuff like this, even though it might seem small, it could bring people closer together. So yeah. Um, today I learned that food, not only just French food, but any food, can really bring people um together, and it can really um, and it can really help people um, figure out things about other cultures, and um, food isn't just like what it looks like. You have to taste it before you can real before you can really say that you don't really like it. And um, it can really help in life because, see, it's kind of like meeting new people. They kind of seem mean, but see, when you meet them and you actually hold a conversation with them, they can seem different, just like food. Um, <laughs> I learned that, well, food can bring people closer together. And this was a really fun experience with all of my classmates and my friends. Yeah, I yeah. basically learned the same thing everybody said it so far. So. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that everything happens around food and it's a lot bigger in the world than I thought. Um, I've learned that all of this just creates family, friends, and a very big community to reach out and experience new things. Today I had a French experience that I usually learn in the textbook, um, like foods and other terms in French, and today I got to use it in real life. Okay. At this time, I would like to thank um, our award-winning TV producer, um, Sanya Armstead, for come for taking time out of her busy schedule to um, teach our students what it is like to put a cooking show together. I also would like to thank uh, Councilwoman um, Hickey for allowing us to use her home as the stage area for the um, for the show. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. 
And one of the things that I try to teach my students is that, you know, you're learning French, but my goal is to teach you to be, to inspire you to become lifelong learners, to give you the skill that you're going to need to be successful in the 21st century. And I would like to hear uh, from them to give me, because they've learned chap in chapter five, they learned about what it's like to go eat at a restaurant in France. And this, the theme now, we're focusing on going food shopping and cooking, what it's like. Mm -hmm. and, and I wanted them to have authentic experience. So I would like for each of them to say something that they've walked away today um, that will inspire them in the future. Thanks for hanging out with us today. These students in Linden are rising to new heights and they're taking on the world one plate at a time. Merci, Linden. Thank you to the Linden Board of Education, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Sanya Armstead and Councilman Hickey for allowing us to, for allowing our students to take part in this authentic experience learning French, connecting food uh, and French at the same time. Bon appétit!